Hey everyone, I know it's been a while, so I wanted to give an update on the printer. So, the nozzle and the bed have been replaced recently. This is actually the first time that I'm using this bed. Um, I just barely replaced it, and the nozzle was replaced probably like a few prints ago, probably about three prints ago. It's a standard 245, but there are some exciting things going on with the Adventurer 3, or the um, Mono... Um, mono... Um, price voxel depending on when you purchased it and where you purchased it from they're the exact same printer when I got mine replaced I got my voxel replaced with this adventure 3 and again it's the exact same the only difference for me was the color and that's just because it was a replacement I didn't really have much of a choice at the time but as far as replacement parts go you can actually get quite a few now the most notable would be the bed replacement so you can see this bed is brand spanking new. There's no scratches, no marks. I haven't screwed up on it. <laughs> and the other thing is the nozzle is uh, new as well, and that makes a huge difference. What it makes a difference by is if you've got an old nozzle, you're not going to be able to get the filament out as easily. It's going to kind of struggle. It's going to get jammed a lot, and your prints aren't going to come out nice. If you've got a bad bed, it's not going to stick to the bed. Meaning that nice first print line right there that you see, it's not going to come out like that. And actually, I showed you guys a few videos where you may start to struggle with the first print line. And so you had to go ahead and modify some things because it only worked with the raft. So this is not using raft, of course. And this is actually the default settings for PLA using this Hatchbox PLA that I go ahead and purchase. Actually, I think this is Amazon Basics now. I think I swap, swapped out. To Amazon Basics. But anyways, essentially, just with standard, you know, refresh parts, everything is working perfectly just as normal again. And that actually has to do with one more thing. So not only did we have a parts replacement, but there was an update out recently too. So I recently moved, so I'm not quite sure when this update dropped. It's uh, probably dropped in the last few months here that I've moved and was able to get this set back up. But what it essentially does is, if you guys were familiar with the calibration beforehand, it would start there in the top center, and it'd come down, and you would center it on the plate. And I always recommended using a notepad, putting it under, and that's how you'd know if you center it. You get it so that you can get that notepad just barely under there, like it's tight, but it can still get between the nozzle and the print bed, and that was perfect. Well, now it actually does a nine point calibration. So it still starts in the middle, but it will go ahead and it will do each corner, each side. That way you can calibrate it to the different heights of the um, bed, depending on if your machine is adjusted or not. So like my last bed was pretty bad. It was uh, between 1.4, um, negative 1.4 that I had to go down on the Z axis to about negative 0.5 on the Z axis. It was all over the place. So when I swapped out this bed, everything is about either, it's either 1.0 or 0.9 as far as the Z axis. And so my bed still is tilted a little bit. The 0.9 is actually here on the front. The one is in the back and it kind of goes consistently from the front to the back like that. Um, but after you go ahead and calibrate that, even with a bad bed, it's going to work work so much more effectively. Of course, swapping out the bed, you're going to get much better results, as well as making sure that you're printing on the right settings for everything. Um, as you can see, I might be a little bit low because you can see ever so slightly just a little bit of um, not smooth, but cut up lines is the best way to describe them. You can see that the nozzle is like slightly pulling and tugging along. That also might not have to do with my calibration or could also have to do with my nozzle. I might not have cleaned it off perfectly last time. Um, I had some failed prints. Uh, I'll go ahead and show those right here. And that bottom layer, that failed print, that can definitely jaw or jam up your nozzle and create some difficulties. But anyways, I've now had this for a few years, absolutely love it. It's moved a couple times, um, had no issues. I've used it extensively, like I've probably gone through at least 50 of these spools easily. And 
it's not been a problem at all for this machine, so absolutely love it. Again, we also have an Elegoo Mars 2, the Pro Edition. If any of you guys are interested in that, just let me know. It is a really nifty machine. It's perfect for mini prints. So I use this for miniature characters, um, actually designing some characters for a game, that uh, board game that I'm designing. But this one right here is perfect for wall mounts right here. This is actually what I'm printing again. This is going to be a fishing wall mount for my fishing pole. Um, it's good for not only wall mounts, but tools that you would use. Um, basic tools or hooks for tools, as well as larger objects. So if I'm building, like, for example, like a game or whatnot, if I need coins, I'm printed off. If I need some large objects, I'll go ahead and print them off on here because this machine is really good at large prints and it's really consistent with large prints and it can do much bigger prints than what this thing can do as you can see this is a much smaller um, tub not a bed but just basically volume of workspace that you can work in though one of the other benefits that these kind of printers do instead of our FDM printers is these printers since they technically display on that 4k screen right there so that's a 4k projector which just beams up intense beams to the base and then it basically molds the liquid residue into the shape or form that you're looking for so the benefit is it does that all at once so as this every single layer has to painstakingly you see that thing going slow and this is default settings it can go a lot slower if you're trying to get higher quality this machine does it all at once. So if I have more prints on here, this actually goes faster. Now it does have to cure between layers, but that means that I can add more things and it'll same, take the same amount of time. If I have one character, it says two hours to print. If I make it so that maybe I have room for 10 of them on there, if I put 10 of them on there, it's still two hours. This would go up exponentially because you have travel time and you have a lot of other things that you need to take in consideration. So anyways, that's just an update on the Monoprice Voxel or the Adventurer 3. If you guys have one and have any questions, let me know. I'm having a great time with mine, though. Um, no matter what, it's worked perfectly for me. Thanks. You guys all have a great day.